Yeah, how, did, how does a team recover then? I mean, does it have to come up with incentives, give package deals, something that says to the folks, hey, we understand the plate that you're facing and mm -hmm. we're here to help. We're part of the community, we want to help. Well, I think you see uh, individuals in John's position across Major League Baseball become extremely creative in their approaches in, in getting fans to the stands, discounts and tickets. I believe 16 of the 30 Major League Baseball teams froze pricing or decreased the price of their, their ticket packages moving into this year. So I think the front office understands you know, the, the plight of, of the, the working individual. I mean, we cannot survive in this industry without their support. Well, you know what? That's a great marketing tool because I'm telling you, as a fan, if someone says to me, I'm going to lower the, mm -hmm. the ticket prices or give you a deal right now as we're dealing with this crisis, I'm going to say, these are my friends. I'm going to, I'm going right, to back what, them up as well. What we've seen, and Brett's right on it, what we've seen is not just the discount, but they want to see added value. So as a marketer, we had to adjust different offers. We created a guy's night out or a lady's night out for the 76ers. And what you mm -hmm. do is you package in four tickets, four meet and greets, food at the stands. And our ladies night out featured two glasses of wine, salads, but also a spa treatment. And if you added it all up, the value may go. have been $350, but you were really only spending $125. You know what? You might actually attract some people that wouldn't otherwise go. Well, Wine, salad, and a right, spa, guys, and then. Yeah, guys guys in the regular season, too. But if the Sixers and Flyers get on any kind of run, Philadelphia will just, I, the 2001 Sixers season, is still one of the greatest things that I remember how the town will take to that. Right, and, and, and following up on what I was saying about added value, we did make some adjustments. We created an all-you-can-eat section so that fans who may not be able to spend a higher price can get a lower price ticket and all-you-can-eat food at the stands. And, and that's what they're looking for, that added value. I and mean, the Phillies, too, you know, for a long time, we, I think we were one of the first teams to do dollar dog days. And that's a great way, you know, it sounds mm -hmm. ridiculous, but dollar hot that's dog, one of your biggest you can't beat that. And that you get a lot of younger time, yeah. demographic yeah. after that game, you get families that come out. And, yeah. um, and a lot of teams now, a lot of baseball teams are, are mimicking what we started a while ago. So you have to find that, you know, baseball, we're trying to make it as family affordable. I mean, our demographic is that broad family. Uh, and so we try to do a lot of things, drop down pricing, group sale, discounts, uh, a lot of different things. Well, we've been asking our panel here about uh, sports and the economy. We're giving you an opportunity to tell us what you think as well. The uh, email address there at the bottom of the screen is the way that you can reach out to me. We also reach out to you. We go out onto the streets of the area and we ask you many of the same questions that we ask our panel here. This is what you told us in person. There's a lot of season ticket holders that have had you know, tickets for many, many years are being pushed out with personal seat licensing and the vibrancy, the intensity of this city is, you know, represented in, in the blue collar uh, workers of this town. And if we want to maintain our edge as a passionate, fun loving sports town, it's very important that we make uh, tickets available to the, uh, to the blue collar fans. My husband always takes me to the nosebleed seat so we don't have to worry about the high pay payment when we enter the uh, sports arenas. People can sit home or go to the local bar and watch TV and get a cheaper beer, get some cheaper food as they're paying for that maybe $40, $50 ticket. One of the things I remember as a kid and growing up was going to the sporting events with my dad and my brother going. And it was affordable, but if you take a family today with uh, two, three kids, it's outrageous. You can't do it. Yeah. It's a weekly salary, and food is more important. I think that people had to cut back, but they really want to go, they'll go. No, I do not think they can afford to go to games because they don't have the money to waste on something that's not crucial. I work every day of my life, every day, and I'm broke. I can't afford to go to games. Lower the prices. Give free tickets away. <laughs> <laughs> Those are just some of the opinions of folks from around, around the region. If you want to share your opinion with us, you can email me at tcn underscore iyc at cable.comcast.com. You, know, you have to admit, for some people who are struggling, perhaps out of work, the ticket prices might seem a bit high. What, what is the argument back to them? What, how's the justification for the cost of tickets in 2009? Not just here, anywhere. But to remain competitive in sports and with escalating player salaries, you have to find some way to pay them. But to address some of the comments that some of the individuals made, there are all kinds of packages and pr at different price levels that Comcast Spectacor makes available for Flyers or Sixers. There's family sections where adults pay $20, kids pay 10 for hockey, for basketball, our tickets started as low as $10. So I think if they look at the teams, 
they will find ways to come to the games. There's game plans, there's package plans, there's all kinds of incentives for people to come. It's interesting he mentions the player's salary because I deliberately have not brought that up yet because, of course, people at home are saying, you know, well, if the players didn't demand so much mm -hmm. and the teams didn't acquiesce to it, then maybe I wouldn't have to, to you know, well, I, I saw there's a piece in the Inquirer today that the baseball salaries in Toto are down close to 2% okay. across the board from last year. And that's one of the few years, Lynn, that I think this has happened, that you see teams again being sensitive to what's going on, and even uh, the Yankees a bit are pushing back on some and, of this. And, and, you know what, we're going to take a, a moment here because we have a caller on the line who wants to weigh in and respond to what you all have said. It's our first call of this half hour and it comes from Craig. Craig, good to have you with us. Hey, how are you? I'm good, thank you. We appreciate the call. Tell me what you think about sports and the economy. Do you think that the little folks are, are feeling the pinch or are they just going to spend that money because they are loyal fans? Well, you know, I think that there's a, a lot, has a lot to do with, number one, what team it is, and number two, how well they're playing. If you look at Teams like the Sixers or the Flyers, you know, you'll see a lot of empty seats because to spend two or three hundred dollars for, you know, for a couple or to take your kids isn't as easy as it used to be. So I think that it, it has to be really looked at on a team for team base, team for team basis in this case. Now, have you uh, made a personal decision not to go out to games? Do you watch it on television? Do you you pick and choose? How do you, as a consumer, personally deal with it? Well, being in the, in the investment field, I kind of see it from both sides. So, you know, on one hand, I get tickets that I give to clients. And on the other hand, I, I go because I'm an avid, diehard Philadelphia fan. And, you know, it's easier when, you're, when it's somebody like the Eagles where you only have, you know, a dozen games or half a dozen home games. So somebody can spend $900 or 1000 on a season. But when you have a whole year, you know, it was quite obvious last year if the Phillies weren't in the World Series, I think that they would have had a lot of less following than they did because football season started. Yeah, but you know, it's funny you, you say that, but look at the Pirates. They've had a losing season since God was a boy, <laughs> and those fans are still headed out there. Yeah, well, you know, I think you see Philadelphia is diehard fans, and I think that's why sometimes the owners, you know, look at it as more of an investment than they do as, you know, you know, a sport like they do in New York where they'll spend the money to get a winner versus spending the money to get a return on their money. All right. And in this market, that's why teams even accept scalping in some way now or selling tickets because they want to fill the stands and they want – They'd rather make sure that the, the seats are filled, and that's why you see not as much fan-friendly when it comes to you know, ticket selling by the teams themselves in some cases. All right, we're going to get some reaction to that, but I have to take a quick break. Craig, thanks so much for your call. We certainly appreciate it. When we come back, we're going to get some reaction to Craig's comments. We are also going to read some of our Facebook comments, and we'll give you a chance to weigh in and tell us what you think as well. As we do go out to break, though, let me congratulate the staff and the crew of It's Your Call, which was named Best Talk Show of 2008 by the Associated Press. Congratulations, guys. You're still the best. Lynn Doyle's jewelry provided by David Craig Diamonds and Fine Jewelry, Newtown, Pennsylvania.